So um, I, I uninstalled VS Code this morning and installed a brand new, a brand new one with a nice clean set of, uh, of plugins. So I'm just going to take you through these extensions that we need. Well, I wouldn't say need, but that, that I need, like, that, I, that I kind of basically install for, for Java. Um, there's an extension pack called the Java Extension Pack by Microsoft, which actually joins together most of the, the extensions that are, are considered like ready and, and useful uh, for today's Java developers. So the, that would include the language support pack for Java by Red Hat. This is basically uh, um, based on Eclipse tooling. So all of the features you'll see would be very familiar to anybody who's using Eclipse. Um, and then some additional Microsoft um, extensions that allow things like running and debugging and testing your, your um, Java applications in, in VS Code. Um, just, I just want to confirm everybody can see my screen, right? Let me just double check if there's anything in the, in the comments. Looks okay. Thank you, Carl. Um, okay, so that's the uh, that's the basic the basic main one is the Java extension pack. I also then installed a couple of additional ones for Gradle, um, as well as language support for uh, Lombok, um, and obviously the Live Share um, extensions because um, that's basically one of the things that Visual Studio gives you that many of the other IDEs don't currently do. But let's jump right into it. You'll see I have nothing open at the moment. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm just in an empty folder here. You can see it's empty there. Uh, let's create a file. And open it in the code. So basically we have an empty file opening here. You can see that, um, no, I just need to move some things around that looks like. You can see that it automatically uses Java SE 14. It picks up the language of Java, but there's currently nothing in here. So if I just use the class autocomplete, uh, hello. All right, so we have a class here, which you'll see that it says it's a non-project file, so only syntax errors are reported. Um, I find this a very interesting and useful feature because most of our IDEs require you to set up a whole class pass Class path um, um, you, you have a whole class path that you have to set up from the beginning. You'll see this, it's all set up, no configuration required. Um, the, the, the shortcuts you're used to in Eclipse should work. So something like that. Should work just fine and you should be able to run it from here as well uh, and you can see it did in fact run our program for us without much configuration which i find very useful if i'm doing small little tests um, uh, small little tests that that i sometimes write and they don't really fit into my project so this is a very a very useful feature that i i kind of enjoy um, with this, you can do debugging already as well. So let's create a variable. Right. I'm not going, I'm not auto formatting any of my code yet. Um, so this we can then run in the debugger, set the breakpoint, hopefully. Where's my breakpoint settings now? Hey, this used to work just five minutes ago. Why won't it set a breakpoint for me? Ha, there we go, set a breakpoint. It's over there. So if I click debug now, You'll see that we can see the variables and we can edit the variables, all the things that we are, all the things that we are used to in a debugger in a, in a bigger IDE is already there. And you can see I changed the, the output by, by using the debugger there. 
so that's the basics the basics of it obviously this this version where it it's a non project file isn't very useful um at work most of the time i'm guessing most of us use uh, maven and gradle projects these days but um i do know that some people do not have uh, that the luxury of working with those cleanly, especially the people at Discovery. Um, but I'm going to show quickly show what what the Gradle and um, what the Gradle and uh, Maven and uh, possibilities are. Um, so let's start with that. I already set up a, a Spring example which I downloaded from a Spring Initializer. I'm going to go back. So you'll see that these are downloaded zip files from Spring Initializer. Let's just look at the Java one first. Just open the folder. Okay, you'll see we have some information here. It says the class path and project files uh, can be hidden for you. I'm going to exclude them for now, but you, you see that they are there. So you can see this is Eclipse based. Anybody who's used Eclipse before will be used to this class path and project and settings folders. Um, I'm just going to exclude them for now so that, um, uh, that we, I mean, we're not going to edit them at all. Um, so basically what you will see is that the Maven project was imported automatically. Um, from here, we can run our, our um, Maven tasks. Packaging from here is as simple as that. Everything is run in the terminal, so it, is, it isn't actually in the IDE. It is as though it's from the command line. So, so if it works here, it'll work on any command line, hopefully. Um, then if we look at, at, at this application, once again, it automatically gives us run and debug options. Um, it automatically gives us run and debug options for tests as well. If we do run these tests, this one should currently pass. Running, running, running. And you can see there's a little tick mark next to it to say that it has passed. There's also the test tab here, which shows you all of your tests that have been run. And you can run them one by one here and whether they pass. Um, when you have a failing test, so let's, uh, let's go. we can run the test from here. And then you'll see it's giving us a test report. Uh, which with the specifics of the of the, the file test and in our test tab on the left we we will see we can also navigate to the actual test that failed from there so that's basically what it looks like for maven uh, I think there was one more thing oh, so the dependencies just for those interested they are also also um, properly re resolved and available um, in your Java dependencies here. The Java outline as well. This outline gives you the, the outline that you're used to on, um, on most IDEs so that you can go to a, a particular place in a file based on that. Um, I think the shortcut for that is Control Shift O and you can then select it from there as well. So that's, that's basically the Maven, the Maven version. Um, and as you saw, it just automatically did all of that. I didn't actually have to do anything to get this Maven, this Maven project loaded in, in this lightweight IDE. Uh, similarly, let's open a, uh, I don't think that's where I want it to be. Let's open another demo for the Spring applications. So this is a Gradle, ver a Gradle version of the same Spring application. Once we open that, you'll see once again all of our all of our automatic resolution of the of the dependencies is once again done by uh, the IDE automatically. Um, in this case, you'll see there are no Maven projects, but this tab at the left here gives you your 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 Gradle um, tasks and applications. So. 
simply you could click build from there once again executing the build task in the terminal uh, you can also pin these builds if you want to have a, a build and a prod build you can pin them and like they show you don't have to navigate in, on this whole um on this whole gradle task tree since it's quite huge um but all the other features are the same so you have testing automatically set up and ready um we can run it from here and uh similarly we could run the application from here ah. from here So basically, this is a very, very lightweight IDE that has all the features that you're used to. Um, I just want to specifically share, oh, I forgot about the live share. I'll show that next. So basically, we are running our application now. We can kill it from here. Uh, let's do a quick live share. So I'm actually just joining the live share myself. Um, so you sh should be able to see me typing on the other live share window. Let me just get there again. And then I should be able to, in this window, so for instance, I can fix any problems that happened. I can run the test from here, or I could run the test from the, from the, from the live share window. So everything you saw in the live share, previous, on the previous live share uh, features for JavaScript, they're all already supported for Java as well. Um, so there's no specific reason why this live share wouldn't be able, you wouldn't be able to use this live share for the Java for the Java features as well. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to just quickly go through is uh, a, a couple of the, of the settings that you might want to set up um, once you, if, if you want to start using Visual Studio Code for, for your Java projects. Um, I found that the, the configuration is, is probably the hardest part. So let's get into our settings, Jason, and see what we have. So, Especially these days, you need multiple JDKs installed on your machine. Um, so this is the configuration you, you would have, you would be able to set up to say that um, whenever a project is requires Java 1.8, this is where you can find the JDK. Similarly for all the others, you, should, you would have noticed that these automatically picked up the correct one. So this one is using my Java, my Java 11 version because that is what the Maven specified. Um, and so obviously it is pointing to this one and it's not using any of the others. So that's pretty smart. Uh, some of the other settings you might want to set up, let's just go to Java. You'll see there's a lot of, of configuration here. Most of this config you'll be, you'll be familiar with from other IDEs and from Eclipse. Um, but it's, this allows you to set up templates and change the way the code completion works. Um, uh, so someone said this is this has been awesome, and will we be having more takeaways for other languages? We actually already have had for JavaScript two of them, um, but we will we're also planning C Sharp, C plus plus, and I think SQL, maybe Python as well. But yes, we'll doing we're, we'll be doing takeaways all the time. Um, one of the settings that I I de definitely no I can't remember where it was. Uh, Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll just have to check my notes. So one of the settings that I I always have to set up because otherwise my my Mac doesn't like me very much is an actual Java home folder. 
So if you go in here, I think it was right at the end that I added it last time. So I actually added that as well. So if you're doing a, if you're doing that, the, the editing of, um, of non-project files, this is the JDK it will use for that Java home. Uh, then just to set up that uh, those exclusions that that I automatically set up before. So these are this is where it, it excluded those class path and project files. So if you want to bring them back, you can remove them from here. Um, and I think that is almost everything I wanted to show. Uh, are there any questions or suggestions or things people specifically want to know about how to use VS Code for Java? I'm going to stop this share for a second and just take you to a different screen. Uh, so this is a very useful resource as well for when you get started. Um, I had a lot of trouble figuring out what my what my keyboard shortcuts were and what um, the plugins allow me to do. And this is a very useful place to just start getting that information as well. You'll see that there are navigation, refactoring, project management, build tools I support, how to run, deboot, uh, run debug and test. Spring Boot is very, very well supported, as are most of the application servers that you will probably be used to, Tomcat, Jetty, Open Liberty, JBoss, as you see, as you saw that um, Red Hat is the is supplies the actual Java plugin. So Red Hat really makes sure that all of their products are well supported. And obviously, then for those who are more cloud inclined, there's a lot of Java tools for Azure specifically built into uh, into VS Code as well. So if you're thinking of deploying Java code to Azure, this is a a good place to start. Um, the AWS and and Google Cloud platform plugins also do work. They do they work pretty well. I've deployed a couple of things just to test them and see if they work. Um, but I would say they're a little bit less polished than than the than the, the uh, Microsoft version. Um, and then also the Docker support is pretty good. So you could theoretically run any of these Maven projects or your Spring application in a Maven. Um, in a Maven, in a Maven, in a Docker container um, on your on your machine or in the cloud uh, for testing purposes, which I also find quite useful. Um, but that is just about it. Uh, any questions? Doesn't look like it. Then why am I seeing everybody? Okay, it doesn't it doesn't seem like anybody wants to put their hand up or type a question. Ha! So someone is asking whether I'm going to use it instead of IntelliJ. So when I was working on a single project, in the the fact that I had to set up IntelliJ in a very particular way didn't bother me very much. But if but if you're working on multiple different projects, I think this is a much much quicker and easier way to quickly to quickly get the code running and see whether it works and um, get it linted and, and inspected and all of that quickly. Um, I would say yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to use this instead of IntelliJ for a while, just to see what is good and what is bad about it. Um, but also the live share feature to me is, is very, very cool. So everybody says that, um, that just doing a Zoom meeting and allowing screen share and screen control works well enough. But I find that that my Mac keyboard shortcuts don't work over that screen share. I have to remember to do Windows keyboard shortcuts during the live share. Uh, so not, not during the live share, during the, the Zoom meeting. 
um, which is which I find very irritating. And this live share has made it much easier for me to actually interact with people without having to have a voice call going on. So um, I tend to use the session chat instead. Uh, let me get back to that window. Uh, I tend to use the session chat instead. So this session chat is where, where I would actually chat back and forth with people. So I'm, I have a couple of, of, um, of uh, the hive heroes that, that I'm um, helping with some of their, their Java specific questions. And this is, this has actually helped me quite a bit with that. So you can type in like type your information down there and the other person can see what you're, what you're actually saying or suggesting. And then I can scroll away from the live share, do some of my own work and come back to the live share. Uh, when someone has another question for me, which is very useful. Uh, next thing, someone asked if I would recommend still having one IntelliJ license for some of its paid features. Um, I don't really know. So I'm, I, I, I buy my own IntelliJ license. I've been paying for it for many, many years. Um, so, and, and I really do love IntelliJ. But the only real features is the Spring integration that I really loved. And it looks like the spring integration for this is pretty cool, um, which is why I said I was, I'm going to actually try it for a bit and see how well um, Pivotal has implemented their, their spring. Let me just show you that. So Pivotal is supporting the spring boot and the, the spring boot and um, all of the other spring um, extensions. So I'm assuming that these are actually how would I put it? They're well, they're well suited for, for spring because spring is developing them and making sure they work, um, work well. Um, so if you want to look at what some of these tools do, I really recommend it. And if you have feedback from me about how well it works, um, I would really appreciate that as well. So, I mean, finding your, your endpoints and stuff like that, that or like it looks like this gives me all of the all of all of the tools I need. I just need to figure out what the keyboard shortcuts for them are. Um, so yeah, so I'm actually considering letting go of my of my IntelliJ Ultimate license uh, for for that reason. I mean, if if there's some if there's a free tool that gives me the same value, why would I pay all of that many many dollars um, if I don't need to? I hope that answers your question. Uh, any more questions? I'm just going to open the chat window as well. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any more. I'm, I'm going to leave the poll open. I think everybody, we have about 20 participants. Looks like everybody answered the poll. And it, okay, so the, the, the result of this poll is that many people already use VS Code on a daily basis, which I find interesting. I did not know that it was that popular. 10% of people said other. Uh, send me a mail so that I know what this other is. If you're not using IntelliJ or Eclipse or VS Code, what are you using on a daily basis for your Java development? I hope some of you say VI or Emacs, I guess. Um, and then about 65% of people feel that they're, that they're not dependent on the paid for features for daily use, which I find interesting as well. Um, so thank you everybody for joining. Um, and we'll, we'll probably post this on the YouTube channel as well. Um, if, you if you missed some of the previous uh, takeaways, they're already published on, on YouTube. So please feel free to go and watch. Uh, BBD TV is the channel name on YouTube. Um, you can ask me or Jason or Lucky or Tony if you can't find it. We'll, we'll send you a link and an invite if you want it. Um, so please go and look at the at the ones we've done for JavaScript as well. They were, they were pretty awesome. Um, with that, I think I'm going to sign off and get let everybody get back to work. Um, thank you for joining me for this quick takeaway. And we'll chat again soon. Cheers, everyone.